Hey guys, Halfway Dead here. Now that Bacchus Mode is finally available for Epic Games, I thought it's the perfect time to show you my top hidden tips and tricks for Bacchus Mod. Everyone knows the mod has great features, like items or the MMR display. This video is dedicated to the lesser known features that you are all missing out on. Obviously, you might know some of these, so I've left timestamps that will allow you to skip ahead. But I'm certain that 99% of you won't know all of these, so let's go right ahead. A lot of you will know that Bacchus Mod allows you to have player point of view go replays. But did you know that you don't have to make just one choice? Indeed, all you have to do is bind this simple statement to a free button of your choice. Then you can switch between the two camera perspectives at will. The way it works is by using console command tricks. The toggle command allows me to switch between different values of any setting. The setting here is CL go replay POV. And the values are 0 and 1 for off and on. The same idea works for many other settings of the mod. There are plugins that can further add new features to the mod. Yeah. I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't know that the majority of Bacchus Mod users have never installed a single additional plugin. In case you're one of those people, you should change that right after the video. If you ever thought, I wish Bacchus Mod had feature X, well maybe someone else did too and created a plugin for it. I would be lying if I said there is a plugin for everything, but there are a ton. Thankfully, nowadays the installation is as easy as two clicks. Just go on BacchusPlugin.com, find a plugin you like, click Install with Bacchus Mod, open Plugin Installer Exe and it should already be working. I'll be talking about some plugins during the rest of the video, but those are far from the only good ones, so make sure you check out the website. This one is only here because I personally get asked about it so often. In the past, I did this crazy experiment where I played with the monitor upside down to get better car control. For ease of use, I've recommended practicing with negative gravity in custom maps instead. A while ago though, the camera system broke and when you turn gravity upside down in Bacchus Mod, the camera flips too. But fear not, there is a plugin. Indeed, it works by using custom fake gravity that doesn't affect the camera. And it even has the extra feature of allowing gravity to be set at any angle, for example sideways. The notification system was actually introduced years ago, but due to crashes for some Windows 7 users, it's turned off by default, which is a shame. I highly recommend that you turn this feature on. By default, it won't do much but display when Bucks Mod successfully injected on launch. However, the purpose is that any feature slash plugin can use the notification system. For example, you can turn on MMR notifications and the auto replay uploader will tell you whether it successfully uploads a replay. Quick settings are the first thing you see when you open the Bacchus Mod menu. Yet they are still underutilized by many. Their purpose is to change multiple settings at once so you can have different presets for different situations. You can create your own, which I've shown in a previous video. But the ones already available are very useful. The lower row is about custom training variants. By default, Bacchus Mod will add some variants to custom training shots. This can sometimes break those shots and make others impossible to reach. As a reaction, many players just turn the variance off and leave it off. That is a very bad idea if your goal is to get better at Rocket League. Variance may be the one single greatest proven practicing advantage that Bacchus Mod can provide you with. Instead of turning it off, I recommend you use these presets depending on which training pack you use. If the training pack is still possible with high variance, that is great. Almost all training packs will work with at least low variance, but there is an even lower one just in case. The only situation where you want no variance during practice is on something like a kickoff slash speed flip training pack, where the ball and player will also always be in the same position in a real game. 
the quick settings in the top row are about the default bindings of the D-pad slash 1234 on the keyboard. The normal mode is the default that you know, and you can use this button to get back to it or in case you mess something up. The air dribble and wall hit modes will give you different ball roll and flight paths in free play, so go ahead and give them a shot. Here we have another plugin, one that I personally use to create the hitbox visualizations. But the great thing about using the plugin yourself is not just that you can look at your car from any angle, but you can play with it too in free play and get a feel for the hitbox. In replays that might even help you understand some weird situations. Overall a great tool to have in your toolbox. Now, this is a lifesaver for Epic players, but also great for Steam users in my opinion. You see, the workshop map menu is pretty bad. It takes many clicks to get to, loads slowly, and the list isn't filterable, which is annoying. So if you regularly use a workshop map, it would be great to have another way to open it. That is possible through the console command load workshop. This command requires the path of the map, which would take way too long to type out every time. However, we can use yet another trick in the console arsenal to make it useful. The alias command allows us to create a new command. What we will do as an example is type alias map underscore left dribble, quotation marks, load underscore workshop, and then single quotation marks. And then we put the full path with forward or backward slashes, and then we end the single quotation mark and then we end the double quotation mark. Then press enter. And then we'll want to type another command, write config, to save the changes. From now on we can just open Lethemir's dribbling map by opening the console with F6, then typing map underscore left dribble and pressing enter. These are bindings that I use many times whenever I open Rocket League. We all hate inefficiency and that was the biggest complaint players had when Psyonix changed the menu system. I didn't really care about that personally because I had already been using bindings instead of navigating through the slow menu. I have my numpad set up as a shortcut menu. The zero is the magic free play button. It is bound to load free play random which will open free play with a random map. You could also set a specific map name or nothing to get the map you last selected. For custom training you just provide the code of the training pack and for custom maps you can bind them too of course. These bindings are semi safe. They have a block in place so they won't work in online games until the game is over. However they could throw you out of a workshop map that you're almost done with if you accidentally press them. So be careful where you bind them. Yes, yet another binding to make your life easier. The Q command allows you to set up a single button to queue whatever playlist you were queuing before. With this bound to 1 on the numpad I just smash 1 and 0 once the game is done and I'm queued up again and in free play faster than anyone without having to navigate a single menu. Again this won't work until the game is over and if the game ends on a replay not until that is done. There is also an alternative way to make this process fully automatic, using a plugin called Instant Suite. It has quite a few configuration options and if you like the idea of having to press no button at all, it will do that for you. This one is quite a simple trick that really should be default behavior in Rocket League. It has always bothered me that the frame rate in the main menu uses the same FPS cap as during gameplay. I could always hear my graphics card fan spin up immediately when I opened Rocket League, but I obviously don't need a super high frame rate in the menu. This simple plugin fixes that and allows you to set different FPS caps for the main menu and everything else. If there is one thing from this list that everyone should use, it's this. That's why I put it number one. These were my top hidden features. Did you learn something? Is there a feature you particularly like? If you run into any issues with Bacchus mod, make sure to check out the troubleshooting wiki page first 
and search if your problem is listed on there. 99% of the time it is, with a solution right below it. I will likely be updating my Bacchus Mode 101 video at some point, as the installer has changed a bit. But the video also talks about many features of the mod, and so does the rest of the series. So if you want to learn even more about Bacchus Mod, that's the way to go. To stay up to date, follow me on Twitter or join my Discord, and I'll see you soon for the next video.